My name is Jenny Sauer. Welcome to the End User Tools Presents Grasshopper Mormon Cricket Visual, and this is the nationwide data collection using ArcGIS field maps. So that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of a title there. I'm going to put a little poll up because I'm just kind of curious um, what device you plan to use between iPad or iPhone, or maybe you're not yet sure, and that's okay. Um, I'd love to know. Uh, kind of what device you plan on using today or this season for the Grasshopper Mormon Cricket data collection. This um, this training is going to cover the much anticipated refreshed version. This Grasshopper Mormon Cricket um, in field maps is is just a refresh of last year. So some of you may have collected data for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket in the past and even be familiar with this mobile application, the ArcGIS field maps application. So there also may be state specific maps available. You'll want to check in with your local field GIS specialist before downloading a map if that's the case, if you have a specific state map. But we're going to go through the nationwide map today. So I can see most of you have given me an answer here and it seems like we're a little bit heavier on the iPad side and a couple of you using an iPhone. So thank you for giving me that. And if you're not sure, that's all right too. I'm going to end that poll. Thanks for answering that for me. So what I'll plan to do today is I will make sure to demonstrate using the iPad. It's a bigger screen, so you'll see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that you get a view on the iPhone for those of you who plan to use an iPhone to collect data, just so you can see what that looks like. It's nothing scary. It really is just a smaller screen and kind of navigating that um, screen so that you can see what you need to to collect that data. A couple things you should feel pretty comfortable using that mobile device that you plan to use. You should be pretty familiar with ArcGIS field maps, if possible, and survey protocol. And survey protocol is um, the responsibility right now. The acting national operations manager is Daniel Murphy. So I want to share a couple of quick resources in the chat with you before we get started. And that are that is these two links. So the first one is the mobile data collection tools web page. This is an APHIS public facing web page, so it can be shared internally and externally. So if you have state cooperators that you'd like to share this information with, please do that. We like that. I'm going to turn off my camera so I'm not distracting myself. Sorry about that. Um, so this mobile data collection tools web page, the top half has a few pages off of it. The training events page I want to point out because Grasshopper Mormon Cricket is listed here on the list of trainings. There we go. And you can see there are actually three course dates. So here we are at the first one and we've got another date, March 21st and May 16th. And you can click on that link and register for those courses or feel free to pass that on if you have colleagues that need to attend this course and couldn't today. Backing up a tad bit to that main page again. The PEST program specific training documents also has written support for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. You can see the list here. We go again, there's Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. You have a user manual and a quick reference guide. And the quick reference is just one page, like maybe a cheat sheet for the field if you want to take it out into the field. But make sure that you avail yourself of these resources as well. I know I like to see things in writing and watch them demoed. That's my personal way of learning things. The bottom half of this page here is a video gallery. And this training that we're doing here today is being recorded and give me about a five to seven day period of time and it will end up here. Um, so it will end up categorized under pest programs under this category. You can also search for it in the little search box, but actually it will end up right at the top because it's going to be one of the most recent if you just give it a look. So if you want to go back and review anything um, that we maybe move too quickly through or you want to share that or you want to use that video as a refresher, maybe in a month's time or something like that, it's going to be here for you to access. Just give me about a week. Um, and then the second link here is your training quiz. And you don't have to take this training quiz, but there are some benefits for both of us, for you and I. So the third little question here asks for your email address. And you need to type it carefully in because this is linked to an automation. And so when you submit the quiz, 
you get an automated email that says, congratulations, you've completed this Grasshopper Mormon Cricket training. So I know some supervisors like to see these types of things. I like to keep track of them. I have like a little folder that I'll kind of save as PDF for accomplishments for the quarter or something like that. And then I kind of know where I am. Um, it may be something that you want. Also for me, it tells me that you're sort of getting what I'm putting out there. So um, use this to just kind of test your knowledge, I'm giving it to you early, you can open it up, you can answer the questions as we come to them. And, you know, it's just a great way to make sure that what I'm telling you and the information you need to know is sinking in. So it's just another way for you to kind of test your knowledge while it's fresh. So make sure that you take advantage of that if you can. So let's get started. What are we going to talk about today? Like I said, there's a few steps to this, right? So some of them you may have already done and that little prize at the top, the little trophy at the top, I'm hoping that this course or this little training today will get you there. Um, just a quick analogy, you're probably several steps higher than this guy is, but uh, like I said, there's some foundational training. The survey protocol for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. And again, we want to make sure that um, that you go to the right person, and that would be Daniel Murphy. Oh, I see we need to, Bruce is saying we need these links. So this is the thing, Bruce is asking for the links that I shared before some of you joined. And so please remind me again at the end, if you wouldn't mind someone, if I don't do it, um, it's something that I sometimes forget to do, is share the links to the website and the quiz again at the end for those who joined later. That quiz or that chat box doesn't keep up with people as they join. So please feel free to let me know that again. So I've just shared it again with everyone. Hopefully we're good, but please feel free to tell, poke me again and I'll, I'll share these links again. So we've got foundational um, training on survey protocol. You wanna be sure you have a device that you feel good about. That's maybe another step up. The mobile app itself, ArcGIS Field Maps. Now that mobile data collection tools website also has training under the general training page for um, ArcGIS Field Maps. There's a user manual and under the video section, that video gallery, there is a 10 short, 10 little video self-paced training that you can take yourself through. If you feel like you've got pretty much the gist or maybe you used it last year, I would still recommend just reviewing those videos. It's a nice, neat little playlist, and maybe a couple of them would be good reminders just to refresh yourself. So make sure you've got that fresh with you. Then, you know, this last one, the gears at the top and the trophy, that's what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to make sure that we take you through how to use the application as it was designed to collect data for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. Just a quick little <laughs> photograph. Um, to kind of hone in on some of the things that you might work with, especially those iPhone users, but definitely also iPad users, there's this tendency to go off the beaten path. Um, so I just discovered, you know, you've got this pathway that kind of takes a swoop all the way around a circle, and then you end up at this little kind of um, landscape little entryway here into the woods. Well, this little path that's been beaten through by humans walking straight through, that's called a desire path. And um, sometimes we see these on the sides of the hill where animals kind of create a little pathway and then other animals follow it and it just becomes a trail over time, a little animal trail. Well, humans love to do these um, paths. And um, I'm just here to say in this case, and um, especially, like I said, with iPhones, and in the case of using a connected versus a disconnected workflow, I'm going to ask you to not use that desire path. Um, so this is me begging you to stay on the path and just stick with me on this training. I'll go into a little more detail, but um, it's just kind of an interesting term I found, a desire path. Let's stay on the path, arms and legs in kind of idea this time. Um, what happens is, uh, especially those with iPhones, you have a cellular data plan and there's this real easy tendency to think, I'm connected, I can just collect data live. I'm not gonna worry about downloading an offline map or the steps that it takes just to prepare and make sure that that's working properly. It seems like it would work great, but there are some things to consider and we'll talk about that a little later. But I just wanted to give you this little visual early. You may be thinking of an easier way. Please 
please, I'm begging you just this once, especially for this workflow. Let's stay on the path. Um, let's stay on the path and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about why that is. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk a little bit about that ArcGIS field maps application. We'll look at just what it looks like to sign in and out because there is some nuance between a practice or training map and the official map for data collection. We're going to overview that disconnected workflow. We're going to talk about the grasshopper Mormon cricket layers and we'll have a look at the data form and enter some data together. I'll do a little demo, like I said, using the iPad and I'm going to try to remember, remind me if I don't, I'm going to try to remember to show you on my iPhone what that um, map looks like as well. And then just some reminders, some general like don't forget this and be careful of that. Hopefully by the time we get to reminders, I've already talked about them and they really will just be a review. Digging in, ArcGIS field maps. ArcGIS field maps, as I said, has some internal support. It has a user guide and a 10 self-paced video series that you should have completed at some point. And if you haven't, please make sure that you've reviewed those and make sure you feel comfortable with it. When you first tap to open that mobile application, you get a view that kind of looks like this. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have an option to sign in with ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise or skip sign in. And here in the federal government, we have our FedRAMP secure um, enterprise site and that is Enterprise. So we're always going to select in the red box, sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. So if that's on a phone or an iPad, you're gonna tap that button as your option. And then you'll get this view. So to start with, the first time you've signed in, you'll only have these bottom two options, specify a new URL or scan code. And we tap specify a new URL. And we're gonna carefully with the keyboard type in manually that URL, which happens to be, I'll give it an arrow, this one. Um, and so as you can see, this is listed above now. On second login or ever after, it will kind of hang on to the URL up above. And now I can just go ahead and tap that to sign in. So first you'll you'll carefully type it in and then you'll carefully be sure that you are choosing the URL that you wish to use to sign in. Now, I kind of mentioned we have a, um, a two different kind of system going in for signing in. So the end user tools group creates a training version, an exact copy of your map for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. There is the official map for data collection and that is held in this top URL maps.mrp that is our official production portal and also a training version. And we want you to be able to practice. I always think about um, you know, the nerves that are involved in using a real map and having to get it right the first time. We want you to be able to practice. We want you to be able to train others. And even today, I plan to use the training version to demonstrate to you the use. So I'm entering false data. It's not real. I'm going to use the training map. And I'll give you a couple boxes here so you can see the difference in that URL. So when you're signing in, the URL that you will type in or choose ever after would be one of these and you want to make sure you're keeping these straight. This is one of the questions on your quiz. So here's a freebie for you. Um, you want to be sure that if you are entering real or official data that is going into this top MRP production portal, real official data in there never 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 in a training map and vice versa if you're just playing or entering false data or pretend data or demonstration data or practice data that should always go in a training map and not in the official data collection map now how do you know the difference if you're already signed in there are a couple nice little hints for instance our training maps all are titled with that word training in all caps at the beginning and also the base map, the little imagery behind everything on a training map is this kind of dull light gray and the official map is a beautiful imagery. So I'll show you those also, but just make very sure that you are signed into the right portal when you're entering data. Um, and as I, I mean, the saying goes, when in doubt, sign out. So we'll look at that quickly too later. The disconnected mode workflow. Um, this is covered in depth in videos and in, in documentation, so you can look into it, but this is the, 
the kind of gist of the flow. Um, the ArcGIS field maps application is specifically designed to operate in disconnected mode. It is a field data collection app, so it's it understands that you would be in the field and not connected to Wi-Fi or the Internet. And basically the office prep in this red box is the important part. If you get this down, data collection goes really well and it can be done usually once and then you can use the same map area repeatedly. So many, many use a, a map area for a whole season, for instance, or maybe download several map areas that serve their needs. So basically, <coughs> excuse me, an area of interest is downloaded to your device while you are connected to a reliable Wi-Fi network. And then that device, you might want to, this last little bullet point here, parking lot test, I always recommend you disconnect and before you leave that parking lot, just open everything up and make sure it's behaving as you would expect. But then once disconnected, you can go on out into the field, collect data all day, and then come back at the end of the day, reconnect to a reliable Wi-Fi network and synchronize that data. I added the little bullet point that might be where you charge your device to. But really the the real important part is this office prep. If that's set up well, you're you're really set up to collect data with success in the field. Finally, the sync is really important because that is a two-way synchronization so that both pulls data in from the online map into your offline map on your device and pushes the data you've collected up to that online map. So it's a two-way sync and really it could be done twice a day before you leave and when you return, but you want to be sure that that's being done daily at a minimum. Finally, some reasons why this disconnected mode workflow is so important. You know, I made a big deal about staying off that desire trail staying on the on the um, on your trail um, and and really making sure that you're staying on the path um, well being disconnected saves a lot of things it saves your battery it saves the map from pinging the server with every movement um, it avoids issues with um, with Wi-Fi connection and with any kind of server outages. So if you have a connection that you believe to be reliable and you lose it for whatever reason, it doesn't affect your data entry for that day at all because you're operating offline. So it saves you from those worries. Um, and also if a server or one of our um, enterprise portals seems to be having trouble, you won't be affected during the day while you're connecting data. You can continue co collecting your data. Maybe a synchronization has to wait until that server's back up, but it doesn't stop your job. It doesn't stop your workflow. So it's really helpful to stay disconnected so that you can keep a consistent um, work schedule and do, do your job. Data layers. So this is kind of what it looks like when you, this is actually a screenshot directly from my iPad. It's not always the best quality. They get a little fuzzy. Um, but all four of these layers here under map layers are grasshopper and Mormon cricket layers with their survey stage. So grasshopper nymphal stage, grasshopper adult, Mormon cricket nymphal, and Mormon cricket adult. And they are defaulted to off. So these toggles here are all defaulted to off to start with. There's also a markup layer. This is a layer that is a feature of ArcGIS field maps. It's just there on every single map. And the only thing I'd say with the markup layer, it, you could find a use for it, but just be very careful. It is not an official data collection layer. So don't use it for official data collection. And it only lives on your device in your map unless you can find a way to share it. So it's pretty much like your private notebook markup over the map. So I don't really recommend it unless your supervisor is wanting to use that for some reason. And um, let's just take a look. I'm going to share. Let's have a look at the data form. This is my PPQ iPad. You can see we've got all of our field apps here along the top. And I'm going to go ahead and open field maps. Now field maps tries to be very helpful. And so you can see it signed me in. I didn't even have to sign in and it pulled me right into the last map that I was looking at, which happens to be grasshopper Mormon cricket. I'm going to go back two times to that main map menu. And I just want to point out right away, we're going to be demonstrating with some play or fake data. So we want to make sure we're in that training or that staging portal. And I know I am, but I can see it also in the titles and in some of these thumbnails that say training. 
right there. So that's a good hint. But if I didn't know and I wasn't sure, I would go to my profile, scroll up and sign out. So I'm going to locate again the Grasshopper Mormon Cricket surveys field map for 2023 and you can see it's current but I could also search for it if I needed to and I'm going to open that map card and I am connected to Wi-Fi for the sake of showing you this so um, here I am connected to Wi-Fi and because of that I can see an online map here um, there's a current map category and an online map category and the online map would be me operating live while connected to Wi-Fi and that's a no-go right we decided we're not taking that desire path however easy it looks and so I've already downloaded a map area if I needed to do another one I could just go ahead and add an offline area right there from the main one but I already have one and so I'm going to open that up I've named it Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. I've named it for this central point, which is I'm in Windsor, Colorado. And I've also named it for the level of detail, which is street. You may have a different naming convention and you may call them anything you want, but that was my, my way of organizing these offline maps. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And right away in the offline map, even if it had taken me all the way to here, like it did to begin with, I want to check again, am I in a training map? So I have, um, I have two signs right now. The map title starts with training, all caps. And the base map is this kind of dull gray, light gray combo, right? So I'll show you on the iPhone in a moment what it looks like, because I've actually signed into our official enterprise portal. You can see the difference there. I also know right away that I am in an offline map, and that's by this little sync button here. These two arrows is your sync button. And this button tells me I'm in an offline map. So if you don't see these arrows, if you don't see this sync icon, you are not disconnected. You're operating live. So you want this button to be present. And one other thing within here, this is where I could sync my data if I had any to sync. I can see I don't have any pending edits, but I want to point out this auto sync is off. So I would toggle this to turn it on and it would auto sync every 15 minutes if connected to Wi-Fi. And I do not want that, so I'm going to turn that off. And I would recommend that you be sure that that is the case for you as well. You don't want your data syncing randomly when you don't have control or, or understanding of the Wi-Fi connection. Um, second in is this icon, it looks like a stack of papers, that's your layers menu. And this probably looks familiar, it's that slide that I had a little screen capture of earlier. And you can see the four layers are defaulted to off and to enable them or make them visible. You see some things starting to pop up on my, on my play map here, some playing around, I'm going to turn them all four on. And then with them four on, they are all visible and all collections within each of these survey stages is now visible on the map. But also under this three dot menu, there's a legend and this could be help, really helpful if you're trying to keep these things straight. So each symbol has its own kind of legend outlined here. So all of the layers that are enabled will show up in your legend. So if I had not enabled all layers, I would only see those layers that I had enabled. So that's all four of them right there for you. So just to get started, if you would like to add data, you want to make sure that this layers menu has the layer enabled that you plan to collect data in. So I have four layers enabled, and that's going to allow me to choose between any of those four. But you may want to enable different layers. So just be really aware of this layers visibility option here. So I'm going to leave them all open and show you what that looks like. In order to add data, there is an add button here at the bottom right. And to tap that, I will now get the option of which survey stage I want to collect data in. And because I had all four available, they're all four there listed. I'm just going to go ahead and, for example, choose a Mormon Cricket Nymphal. And that opens the data form for automatically Mormon Cricket and Nymphal. There's a couple things here. We have required fields that are indicated by a gray asterisk or star. 
can see some of those, and some defaults pulled in. Um, another default is the agency, which we can change just by tapping and choosing another option there if we want to. Um, sometimes there's also hints. So under surveyor, you see first and last names is what's wanted. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Jenny Sauer. If the next field asks for the keyboard use, you just have a next option here and you can just kind of keep that keyboard open. I'm just going to put in test. I think I'm on five. You would follow survey protocol here. And I'm going to say no, and none of my numbers are going to make a lot of sense, but I'd just like to put something in. Survey date is, for me, a, a little tricky. Um, so we are restricted. If I go back, we're restricted to this year. I can't put anything before or after. Um, but let's say I accidentally picked a date that is not correct. I can tap today, which will bring me right back to today's time stamp, date and time. But sometimes I have a tendency to scroll and hit something else. So once I've hit today, I like to close that by tapping it again and just kind of lock that in. A couple of other little groups of questions here. There's optional information, which if I tap, it opens the group of questions and I can close it. They're optional. Location information is another little group here. And this is being maintained by GIS, so it's present, but we don't have to do anything there. And quality control report also maintained by GIS and editor. So it's here, but we don't need to do anything with it. So I would always then check over my form. Have I filled everything out? I think some of you have probably already spotted something that I missed, and I've done that on purpose. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to submit that. And you can see I hit submit and it said, oh, there's one failure here and we've got a required field popping up in red. If this was way down in the form, if I hit view, it would pull it up just like it kind of did there. But we can see I missed the state, which is a required field. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Colorado. And also just for the sake of this uh, demo, I'm going to pull the point away from where I am because it looks so similar. So this original point here is my GPS location and it was in it had a blue circle and I've got messaging up here that I'm meeting the GPS accuracy. Um, I'm in my basement, so I'm actually really pleased by that accuracy, but you should have hopefully better accuracy even. And I've pulled the point over here. So this is our point that we're adding. And I've completed the form and I feel good about it. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit again. And that's all there is to that. So let's say um, maybe I changed, maybe I put in tribal cooperator and I've realized that is really not true. I've messed that up. I need to edit. There is the ability to edit. Um, right now I have what we've just entered together highlighted or selected and that's indicated by this blue around that point on the map. I'm going to close that and deselect and try that on another point just so you could see what that looks like. Let's say this guy needs an edit. So I've selected it. You might have to use your fingers to zoom in and out and make sure you have the correct site selected. And you may want to look for a unique identifier, maybe like site name to be sure you have the right one. But then we have this option, a pencil at the bottom. That's your kind of universal editing option. Or you can scroll down to the bottom until you find edit and go ahead and hit edit. So what that does is it opens up that same form to edits now. So you were in view mode and now you're in edit mode. And so I could say, oh yeah, agency, I'm actually a state cooperator. And now this edit has to be submitted like all others. So now we have the same thing. We want to go through and make sure that form looks good. Everything's entered correctly and hit submit. Now, before I move on, I want to show you what this looks like from the iPhone for those of you who may be using an iPhone. So I've got the same same app view here. I'm going to open field maps. It's pulled me in a little bit, so I'm going to go back here. OK, so this would be the, the main map page. If I was unsure where I was, again, profile, scroll up and sign out. 
I can tell you already that we are not in our stage or training portal, that we are in our USDA MRP enterprise portal. This is official data. And the reason why I don't see training in any of these titles, these are all good looking titles, right? And I can see that there is a grasshopper Mormon cricket map here, the second one down. And I also know that I have downloaded an offline area. It tells me right there on the card. So I'm going to select that. And it looks like that offline area failed. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just show you um, live, but please don't, please don't do that. I'm not going to waste the time here with you all. But you want to make sure you have your offline area exactly like the iPad. Take the time to make sure you're using an offline area. And we're opening that map up. And you can see the map looks very different. So I've got the iPad here behind. And you can see you've got this light gray. This is the same area. And we've got imagery that's colorful. And another big hint that we're working live, which is the no, no, no. Remember on the iPad in an offline map, we had the sync button. And here we do not have a sync button. So that means we don't want to collect data like this. We want to go back and make sure we have an offline map and collect data and make sure that sync button appears right up there. Um, it's taking its sweet time to load. There we go. But here's our plus. Just like the iPad, iPhone's got the plus to add data. And I have the same view of layers that default to off. I turn them on. And if I want to, I can close that or I can actually slide this menu up and down for a more view of the map if I need to. I'm going to hit plus so you see what that looks like. And you choose a layer just like the iPad. Everything's the same, just less space. Um, and so it, You've got the ability to sort of slide this data form for a full screen view and, and do things like that or pull it down and have more of a map view. So that's the difference there. So you got to see both, even though this guy seemed to not have a offline map ready to go, but you get the gist. So some of the reminders that are important um, to kind of go over, remember the difference between that official and training map, be sure you're signed into the correct enterprise portal. Real data goes into the official map training or play data into the training, not vice versa. Don't mix and match those. Um, be sure you're using a disconnected data collection mode. Stay on the path if, you, if at all possible. Take the time in the office to prep and make sure you have those maps ready to go. And remember that daily data sync. It's all part of that workflow and it's really important to do. Um, da careful data collection. It's not meant to be an insult. I think it's more for me than anyone. Um, but just take one more moment. I can't tell you how many how many times I've misspelled my own name um, or done something that just I, I can't explain why I hit that button, you know. So always take that one more moment to look at the form one more time. Just scan and be sure that everything's entered correctly before submitting the data. Um, a reminder about that markup layer, it really is just a feature of the app itself. We don't recognize it as an official data collection layer, and it's a little dangerous because it really is just private notes for yourself. So don't use it for real data, and just remember that if it's being used, it's private to your device unless you find a way to share it. The submit button fail we were able to see, it fails if you uh, miss a required field, or sometimes it can also fail if you're not meeting that GPS accuracy. Um, even in my basement, I managed to get that from my iPhone and iPad both. They're pretty amazing machines, but that would be why, and you'll get messaging if that happens. We talked about um, quite a bit today, but Every scenario can't really be covered. And so I thought I'd give you some of these options. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Thought I'd give you some more options for getting help. So remember your national operations manager right now is Daniel Murphy for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. All things survey protocol, go to Daniel and get the answers. iPad issues, I should write iPhone issues here. CECIT manages our devices from start to finish, from uh, birth to death kind of idea. So if you have issues with the, your device, reach out and open a ticket. Um, access to the correct maps, 
or access to the enterprise portal at all or issues with the field maps application, there's kind of an order here, right? If you start with your supervisor, you might find um, your supervisor knows what to do next. So start there. They might go to your local field GIS specialist supporting your area, and they may email this webgis.connect at usda.gov, which is answered by a group. So you have the ability to, to reach out and get answers right away if you need them. Anything training, EUTG is my group, that's End User Tools Group. Anything training or support on these applications themselves, the way that they were designed to be used, we're here for you. And this is just another good time for you to just keep track of that mobile data collection tools web page. We update it sometimes daily, sometimes even more than that, especially during our busy season, which we're going into now. If you can't find something there, let us know. Um, we'll try to make sure that you have the support you need at all times, but definitely keep that close by. So what have we covered? We talked about the field maps application, signing in and out of those two different enterprise portals, the official um, USDA MRP and the staging or training versions. We talked about the importance of staying on the path, not taking a desired route and using that disconnected workflow. We looked at the layers and how the data form performs when you enter data, even editing a previous one. And we went over some reminders of what to watch out for. It's just a good time if you haven't already um, to take advantage of that quiz. Actually, this is probably a good reminder for me to put those links in the chat one more time for you. Um, but test yourself while it's fresh. I, I encourage you to make sure that that information is sinking into your brain and you feel really clear and confident about it. And finally, I've given you a lot to think about and I've given you other resources, but I certainly would always be happy to hear from you myself. And so again, I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm a mobile solutions specialist with the End User Tools Group, and we really want to support you and make you feel comfortable, confident, ready to go out and collect data for Grasshopper Mormon Cricket. And so with that, I'll just say, are there any questions now for me or anything that you would like to see in a little more detail or that I didn't cover um, and you're welcome to speak up or you're welcome to type that in the chat. Um, Sean says, when can we, we expect the 23 map template to drop? <laughs> You're making it sound a lot cooler than it is, I think, Sean. No, maybe it is that cool. Um, Sean, the Grasshopper Mormon Cricket nationwide map is now released and open for use. And um, just one caveat that some states do customize things for the state. So if you believe that to be the case, reach out to your field GIS specialist to be sure that you're downloading the right map. But the nationwide map is now open for use. Well, then I will let you go, but please feel free to reach out to anyone on our, on our team. We really wish you success and good luck. And um, thank you for coming and being responsible data collectors. And um, please let us know if we can help, but otherwise I wish you good luck and thank you very much.